Welcome to another episode of King's World. Okay, I promised you guys that I was going to have a special guest, someone that nobody's interviewed before. Um, we couldn't do it last week because of this COVID nonsense and she had obligations, but now, here we go. The legend herself, the one and only Miss Liz Gaspari. Say hello. Liz. What's up? Okay, so... This is going to be one of those crazy Sammy interviews. Just cuts me off, <laughs> this is going to be one of those crazy <laughs> interviews because if you don't know Liz, she's off the cuff. She doesn't care. She doesn't give a flying f, and she says what's on her mind. So she is a, a a Kamali. She's crazy, and this is going to be a great interview. And a lot of things are going to get exposed. So, but for a lot of you kids out there who don't know who she is, let's start. Liz, introduction. Yes. Tell them who you are, who's Liz Gaspari, where we are right now. Just give them a quick introduction, please. Well, we're right now in the Bat Cave, oh. as you all know from Instagram. So that's all I'm going to tell you about that. Okay, Bat Cave. We'll call it that. We're in the Bat Cave. Yeah. Um, well, let's see, you know. What's your background? Where are you from? Where am I from? I'm from... <laughs> Where am I born? Yeah, I'm yeah, born, you're, raised you're, Allentown, Pennsylvania. Allentown, Pennsylvania. Okay, yeah. and your background, uh, ethnicity. You're from Afghanistan. Your family's uh, from Afghanistan, right? Yeah, family okay. all from. Very close to Iranians. Right next door. We're right next door with neighbors. We're okay. like she brotherly love. I can't even talk behind her back because she understands um, exactly. Really <laughs> she knows exactly what I'm saying. So uh, trust I, me, <laughs> I can't get away with that. All They're right. not getting away with it. Okay. Liz, um, you came here, you were born here, you did your thing. Um, how did you get into supplements and body yoga? Well, that's a crazy story in itself because before I got into supplements, I was sort of in the game, but in a different arena, mm -hmm. you know, around all very good looking guys. <laughs> really? So exotic dancers. <laughs> I would say performers. Okay, so <laughs> all right, so you were involved in the, the male exotic performance uh, yeah. criteria. Okay, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. so you did that for a while, and well, you got to um... let's like get into it a little bit, ladies. Okay, <laughs> you know what I mean? Just a little bit, just a little bit, just right? a little bit. Um, we had a club in Philadelphia, um, Cave okay. Cave Entertainment, Cave Entertainment, and I've heard then of it. Um, we branched out to the Men of the Cave. So the guys that work for me were really like the best looking guys in the tri-state area and a few of them were Chippendales. Okay. And I like was taking them from club to club to club. Right. And it just got like really insane. So you were promoting. Well, they, you know. <laughs> well, how were you involved in that? Well, they work for me. So, oh, so you were the boss and they came to you and you hooked them up with different jobs? Yeah, people were calling for like bachelorette parties and then, you know, we just started sending all the guys out. Okay, all right, so you make a... And I never really knew any guy's real name. One was like Renegade and the other one was like <laughs> Steve Savage and the other guy was like, yeah. You know, okay, so I mean? you started out but in that they industry. Were, yeah, they were all like very fit. I would say more in like... If you look at the industry now, I would say like physique guys, you know, between physique and then maybe a little bit bigger. So, I mean, I, all so I can between, say is like... So in other words, just, between physique and classic guys right now, I, right? I guess, okay. yeah. All right. But they were just, you know... So you got into them and... Good they, looking. Okay, good looking guys that lifted weights <laughs> and they came and they were... They were just you were good see, looking. Like, eating, like good foods and protein and then you, that's how you got into bodybuilding. I would see them dance, really. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so these, these crazy strippers, they would come and they were they, you were the boss. They were very educated guys, to be honest with you. Really? I swear to God. I They were, you know, they did what they did at night. But I got to tell you, like, you know, I've been into the women's strip world and I saw how it was. Right. But the men, I got to tell you, like, the guys that work for me. Right. They were, like, they had their, like, they knew. What they were doing. Okay. I mean, they had their game, but they, you know, they had a, he doesn't, you know, Kamali doesn't want to talk about this because he's not talk dudes, about you know? but swinging strippers. No. I want to get to the other stuff, it okay? It's actually <laughs> a show. 
It was the men of a cave. So you they got, had a show. So you and laid down. Boss. You laid down the, the the fact that you're the boss. That's how you got your well, business. Well, they just kept sense. calling. You yeah. did the books. You did the numbers. You did all that stuff. Okay, so let's take that right. to the next phase. When did you meet? Obviously, your last name is very. A famous last name, the Dragon Slayer, Rich Gaspari. When did you and how did you meet Rich and how did you guys become a couple? Well, then after the Men of the Cave, we own nightclubs. Okay, so you went to the nightclub. He's just cutting everything out, like in between. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I just, you know, get it out there. A uh, big nightclub in North Jersey, Latino hip hop, so you know. Okay. We're called Foxes. We're one of the biggest. Um, so you were the owner of Foxes? No. My. X that was rich before C B C okay rich right yeah um, Lebanese they they were in the club business okay. so what I did was I uh, brought my mail review there <laughs> and you know, one thing led to another you know and then all of a sudden I'm running the nice clubs. The beginning of the hustle. I love it. Go yeah, ahead. but you know, once, once you're in the hustle, you're like always in the hustle. But I just wanted to stay like, you know, I, I couldn't work for anyone because I didn't know how to show up at nine. You know what I mean? I got you. Like, I just couldn't do it. Okay, I, so I, 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 I couldn't do it. So I would show up at four. Right. And it was something that I liked to do, which was go out, make money. No, make money, go out. Right. And you know, so you had were, a lot you, of good looking. You were people. building the foundation of your business hustle. I think it's like the knowledge that I learned. Gotcha. In in dealing with different people. Okay, so that was your ex before Rich, and then you met Rich. How'd you meet Rich? Well, let me just say, at Foxes, they put a gun to our head. <laughs> Literally. That one I they, didn't know. Yeah, he, he didn't know that. <laughs> that one I didn't know. But our bouncers got us like, you know, at the end of the night. And you're talking about a club that um, some of the biggest hip hop stars were coming to and, and singing. Right. And I, at that point, I really didn't know who was who. It was like, you know, one night it was like Latino or whatever, then freestyle night. So we had like George Lamont, TKA, Jennifer Lopez. What's his name? The husband. A Rod? No. Jennifer Mark. Lopez. Oh, Mark Anthony. Yeah. Right. So you I knew have, nothing about this. So this guy was coming suits. to come sing with me and asking us to promote, you know, Mark Anthony in New Jersey in a stadium that I knew nothing about. But um, they came one mm -hmm. night and, you know, we were on top of our game. We had like um, big, uh, you know, walk-in freezer right. at the club in the first level. And um, our bouncers were half like, I guess, the... Uh, we were cops, you know, off duty. Right. But then other guys were, you know, just just big guys from, I guess, Bergen County, Jersey City area, whatever it was, and they came at us like, um, the bouncer was like, you know, telling my ex to say, hey, is it okay if we go? And he was like, yeah, 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 just go, you know, we got it. We turned around. Next thing you know, there's a gun on our head, and they were like, don't look at me. Open the safe, and the guy was like, my ex was like, calm, calm down, just calm down. Um, he went our walk-in safe, you right. know, had him open it, wiped the whole fucking thing out. Like, who even knew how much was in there? Because this is a cash business. Right. This is nightclubs. This is it is what it is. They fucking took everything. But all I can remember is when that one second, if even a second, I looked into the guy's eyes, the mask. Okay. You know, I saw like, this is the eyes that I've seen before. It was like my bouncer. Oh, wow. So your bouncer my came. My head wow. bouncer. You know? Your head bouncer I, came to rob the place. Hey, it was a group of them. I don't know how many people were there. You just have a gun. You look for one second. You know, you don't think like at that moment, hey, um, this is like, mm, you're not like. Oh. So it was your bouncer and you were <laughs> on top of the world and he took everything. He took, look, they took, they took every dollar that was in the safe. And I, I couldn't even tell you um, the amount of money that was in there because, wow. you know. That's crazy. It was crazy. And 
from, you know, the next day that, you know, the cops were there until whenever. And then, you know, I went home and they, my ex was just dealing with it. And then, I mean, they were always trying to shut us down for one reason or another. And we just couldn't like seem to like shake it off at all. Like from that point on. Wow. So, um, we how'd shut you make, down. How'd you make a comeback? Oh, that was shut down. Right. And that was like, you know, listen, your own club, you're in the top of the game of the nightclub business. Right. And you have it all, and it comes crashing down mm -hmm. overnight. Overnight. Right. So from there, you know, stuff was like real rocky and <laughs> went into like dry cleaning business. Ask me anything about that. I can tell you, I don't even. I didn't even know what to wash clothes. And then I was just like not feeling that whole like lifestyle of, you know, being in the dry cleaning business. Okay. And, you know what I mean? Now you're around different things. You're, you know, right. it's just like not, no, a lot of respect is a hard uh, thing to do. Right. But it was called Laundry Express and we built it to as far as we could. Mm -hmm. One price cleaner. And we sold that and then just the relationship itself like went to crap and I just kind of wanted to get myself back like feeling the way I used to. Okay. You know. So when is Rich come to the So team? then I started, um, hired a personal trainer okay. at Bulls Gym in Cherry Hill. And my trainer, Stacey Simon, she was, uh, I think like a fitness pro. Fitness or, pro. Black chick, right? Uh, uh, yeah. But yeah. even before that, it was like Maria Gonzalez. Right. But she was, you know. I know Stacey. Stacey's really cool. Yeah. yeah. She's very, very, you know, very educated. Yeah, yeah Stacey's Really awesome. nice. But she was like sort of pimping me out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like I felt like pimped out, you know? Okay. She kept pushing me and pushing me and pushing me. You got to meet my friend. He owns a business. He wants to, you know, he needs help. And. And at one time, like, you know, um, Rich or some, one of them asked me, oh, can you answer the phone? I have to go away. I need somebody to answer the phones. And I was like, oh, answer the phones? Right. You know, how, how am I going to answer the phones? Like, I was all worried about, I didn't know his business. I didn't understand anything. Right. You know, so um, I would talk to him. I would, uh, by the way, the phone didn't ring. <laughs> okay. When he went away for those three, four days, it didn't ring. Um, and then, you know, I was trying to keep things kind of copacetic, but he's very, very, uh, persistent kind of So he came man. after you hard, right. So yeah. he, he pursued you hard. Right. But what we had in common was more like always talking about business. Business. Okay. So I, I got to know, I was like, oh, damn, like you're Rich Gaspari. Like, like I had your picture on my wall and he was like. <laughs> Yeah, sort join the club. So offended in a weird way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I only had certain pictures on my wall, like Rick Springfield, John Stamos, <laughs> but then Rich Gaspari. Okay. But then also Michael Hurst. So you started a real Michael. <laughs> so, you, so you started a relationship and yeah. you just started to prosper and get better and deeper and yeah, all that stuff. And, and it was more because, you know, um, the, I would say the business side, you know, because I was trying to push him, um, he, he just seemed like very down and depressed and you know so you had a better was, business connection than a emotional connection is that is that a right assessment well look let you know he was a good looking guy like right you know i'm not going to take that away from him and i don't like you know he was more my type okay you know what I'm so saying? it worked like i, I was like oh, it worked yeah it worked you okay. know and but i he was retired Mm -hmm. Okay, but he wasn't really feeling himself and you know as an athlete You know, it's you know, you got one aspect and then as a business person You know, you got a lot of doors slamming at you. Not that the athletes don't have a lot of you know Doors slamming on them too, but it was hard for someone like him to take that So I ended up making the calls all the time. Okay, you know what I mean? so, so, so let me let me interject real quick So you yeah. came into the picture you had the business hustle you had the numbers head. You had the business mind. You saw Gaspari Nutrition. You came to the rich and said, um, you could be doing so much better, so much more. You took over because the way I heard it from your reputation, from what I heard was you were the one who came in and then the company just went, started to take off. Right, because I would look through the magazines and I would be like, 
oh, who's this company? I mean, I didn't know one thing from another. I didn't know really anything, okay? Because I wasn't, you know, the men of the cave. The men of the cave was the men of the cave. They knew right. what they were doing. I didn't follow, you know. Hey, so who were the big guns back? Like Muscle Tech. Well, who was MHP? I, I, who was? The, uh, I would say Muscle Tech. Muscle Tech. Okay. I was always saying Muscle Tech. Right. I would see um, MHP. MHP. Okay. I, I think those are the only real two that I just right. remember. Right. Uh, and uh, Labrada. ABB two American Labrata. Bodybuilding. Yeah, but they were sort of not our I see competition. Yeah, yeah, okay, I get that. I would say Labrada. Okay, and Labrada. And, you know, Rich used to always be like, you know, damn, I wish I could be like Labrada. Right. <laughs> and who knew he was, and you Right, you know what I mean? Picture. But okay. Labrada, you know. So let me stop you right there. We're going to have to go, because I got so know, many questions for you. He just, like, come on, just cuts me off. I have so many questions, <laughs> that's why. I got so many questions. So let's go to the next one. Why did you, why did they call you the supplement queen? What did you, because it was a, man's world the supplement the supplement game right. the people that i knew they were all fellas and they were all like knew each other and like you said right. everybody had their own thing that they were battling i wish i was this guy muscle tech was in canada and paul was doing his thing and lebron was doing his thing how did you become the supplement queen i think it was just a lot of persistence persistence hard work hard work dedication never gave up but then it was tell like, that to the kids it's about the hustle right it's, it's about, definitely about the hustle did you ever sleep I because when you sleep. when you do, see, I'm going to cut you off. But when you ask all these, like when you ask Sean Combs, when you ask Puffy, when you ask all these multimillionaires, Jay Z, they all say the same thing. They never sleep. No, nope. it's a work 24 hours a day. You're hustling. I couldn't breathe, and all I wanted to do was make Rich happy. Can you believe that? Wow. Okay, that's deep. It is deep, that's and deep. and I think that comes back from my culture. You know the woman behind the man. Mm. So I don't want to get into, you know, all respect for the, you know, women out there. Which goes to one of my favorite sayings that I yeah. say, it's behind every strong man is a stronger woman. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, but that you would know, be you. Right, okay. But, you know, I wasn't used to growing up with compliments, believe me. Okay. Um, so I didn't really need it. Okay? okay. I didn't really need someone to tell me, Oh, you're going to do that? You're crazy. Because I was told that from a young age. <laughs> okay, so which leads us to the next question. Yeah. Your, your reputation. You have a reputation from a lot of people that I've spoken to in the industry as a ruthless businesswoman. Like, don't F with this woman. Why? Yeah, because I don't really have the time or patience to, um, you know, at that point, let anyone walk over my family and of course that's uh, rich. So where a lot of people would see him as the athlete, the legend, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, I was sort of always in the background and you know, you can see some smoke all the time because I'm, you know, they used to hand me the camera. Can you take a picture? <laughs> who the, who the, so, you know, it was like years and years and years of this. Right. When I say years, I'm talking Many, many, many years of me getting, you know, that, can you take a picture of us? You know, and I gave it to him, made him feel good. But what made him feel good is the business making numbers, getting bigger. Right. So I just, you know, started calling every place I knew. But I think we were like yin and yang. You know, anytime a distributor or something, they would ask me, Anything to do with the product, I'd mm -hmm. be like, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me get rich real quick. You know what I mean? It was like tag team wrestling. You Again, which goes back to what you said earlier, saying that what you two had worked. It worked. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Big ballers. Who are the big ballers in the industry back then? Let's say 15, 20 years ago. <laughs> was it that long ago? It was that long ago. Yeah. 15, 20 years ago. Muscle tech, obviously. Um, they were a monster. Listen. Muscle tech, I always thought was like this giant that I could never like really touch. Right. Okay. Because it was really Iovate. Yeah, but they kind of were a giant. I mean, no, no, no. They are a giant. Yeah. Like they are. They are a monster company. Like, I don't even know. I can't even relate to. They just are, were big. Right. So I had my eyes on DSM. 
BSN, okay. Being that owner of BSN, mm -hmm. <laughs> I had this like, like, I, I won't say love, like, hate relationship. The bald one, right? I forgot, I forgot his name. Yeah, I can't remember his name I either. His Scott, name. maybe? Scott, yeah, Scott. Oh, something. James. Scott James. Scott James. Scott James. Yeah, Scott James. So, oh my God. <laughs> like, one minute he would be like, hey, Liz, how are you? Wow. Next minute I'm in the elevator. Oh, me and him. Me and him. Tell, real quick, tell tell the audience out there about the stack of lawsuits you guys will get on a daily basis. Listen, all the first You use the word nitro, you're getting it sued. Look, you use the word the letter B was in your product, oh you're gonna get sued. Oh my god. I remember <laughs> being at a show, I think it was the Olympia. Yeah. Okay. And like number one. I have my own problems I have to deal with, which is social anxiety. Can right. you imagine that? No, Having... you know, but okay. Yeah, but I'm like, Ugh. no. I always had like fear of social anxiety. Right. Uh, like bad, bad. Um, so I'm sitting there at the Olympia, these dudes in suits walk. You know, when a guy in a suit walks by the Olympia, can't be good. You know, unless he's like, you know, from the magazines or something like that. Why you know can't it be saying? good? Why? Oh my God, because every, you know what I mean? Like, we being served papers? Is that what it was? Well, yeah, we, I didn't know anything about that. And the guy goes, Are you, Liz Gaspari? Are you Gaspari? And I was like, Yes, how can I help you? I was right. like, all like kissing his ass, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He threw this big old stack of shit, you know, and I didn't know what he was doing. He was like, You're served. And I was like, Served what? Yeah. Like, See, that's, a, that's the part of the industry that I, I a lot of people understand. don't get and don't understand. I was understand. like, what um, is he talking about? And it was literally because Branch Warren was at working at our booth. So it was apparently a conflict of contract, yeah. and it was like a whole mess. And I can tell you from my own personal experience, I was signed with Muscle Tech. You know, I was one of the superstars, and it was a great, one of the best times of my life. I went to the Nutribolics booth at the Arnold Classic right. to say hello to my friend Batista. Right. You know, we're really good friends from back then. So he saw me and he called me over. I went into the Nutribolics booth, hugged him, and then all the fans came around and started taking pictures. Yeah. I got in yeah. so much trouble from Muscle Tech yeah, you, just from saying hi to my friend Batista. Muscle so, Tech is no joke. Yeah, they come after you. Okay, no so joke. let's, let's yeah. just stop there. Um, I was going to ask you these two questions, but I'm going to wait till the end because. Oh, boy. Yeah, so we're going to put that to side. Okay. All right. So you came in, you guys, obviously everybody knows the Gaspari name, the, the, the products. I'm just going to, without going through the history of that, because that's just going to take too long. I'm just going to say one word and you tell me if that was the company, that was the product that made you guys go from here to here. Hollow draw. That was, was that it? Oh, definitely. So it was hollow draw. Well, let me tell you something. We got into a massive internal battles, even with the hollow draw. Made us a lot of money, but damn, even like our, our, I'm just saying our inner battles were like. Phew. Is it true? Is the rumor, the myth true that some reporter from Washington Times or New York Times or Washington Post wrote an article about you guys selling illegal yeah. stuff and then you guys sold out in two days? No, <laughs> we didn't. We, we, we sold out go? in um, five minutes. <laughs> No, so days. it wasn't two days. No, it was so just you guys sold out in five minutes. One distributor, it was Europa, right? Which was, you know, is like the yeah. top dog. The and Eric and, Hillman, uh, peace. He's one of my Eric course. Hillman. Love you, brother. Go ahead, peace. <laughs> okay. All right. So you, this 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 woman made did an article, and you guys said you guys are selling selling roids. Yeah. And, and Eric was like, I'll take all of it. Took all. And I was like, hold up, <laughs> hold up on. Wait, wait, Rich, calm down. Right. You know, I said, I know. And he was like, you don't understand. And his face was like red. And that just Veins took you guys from out. here to here. No, but uh, yes, but yeah. I'm just saying, like, I was like, listen, we have a couple other, you know, distributors. Let me just give them like 144, which is, sh it's nothing. Right. But please, because... You know, these guys were loyal from the beginning. Right. That little 144 that I gave them right. created war because nobody can get over it. <laughs> I was just right, like, right. 
let me just, you know what I mean? Because I remember that time. I remember that time. I remember the hollow draw was. It was sold out. Yeah, it was sold out. It was an amazing supplement, and and I I remember hearing all the stories. I remember talking to Hillman, and Hillman's like, "We made so much money, King. Right. We made okay, awesome. Yeah. So from hollow draw, we're gonna we're gonna just that oh, everybody else product. knows. Everybody no. knows Super Pump. No, 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 knows. it wasn't even that. It was a product that we had made before hollow draw called Novadex. Rolex XT. Novadex. It was Novadex back then, and it was an anti rheumatase. Okay. And um, you know we were selling that before Hallidrol as an anti rheumatase. Okay. Right. And during the time of the Hallidrol, um, one of our um, formulators, <laughs> chemists, right, whichever you prefer. Um, was like you, you should do some studies you know what i mean because we only had a couple runs of the halodrol because of the the you know government trying to shut us down right the fda so then we um had some uh testing done with baylor university right. and then not only did novadex lower estrogen it increased testosterone right so that then really was our number one seller to basically like, you know, take this company and fund. Was that your flagship? That or, was it. So no, so Nodex was your flagship. Absolutely. So like Hydroxycut was MuscleTex flagship. Absolutely. Nodex was your. Okay. That was it. That I didn't was know that. Our, I thought it was Halogen. Okay, good. Seven hundred percent margin item that wow. we had from the beginning. That's amazing. That worked like, like anything. Right. It was a great, it was an amazing product. And we had Absolutely. a great run from 2004 or five all the way till the other class action lawsuit. Okay, right. so we're gonna stop there because we're gonna get to that. Okay, um, next yeah. question. Who's Ron Kramer? Ron. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Ron Kramer? You go Come on, that answer to Because that. that's how I am, that's how King does oh it. Oh my Who's God. Ron Kramer? Ron answer Kramer. the question. Well, you gotta ask me, Ron Kramer at what year? When you met him, who how did you who is Ron Kramer Listen, to you? Him and I didn't know each other. Right. Let's just say that. The entire like, you know, run of when I'm in the company. Which right? Ron Kramer are we talking? Because the Ron there's Kramer two Ron there's Kramer. the Ron Kramer that I'm talking about, everybody used to say to me, Oh King, be careful. That guy will rip your heart out, he'll True. kill you, he'll, he's incredible, he'll Fact. kill you, he he'll he can kill you with one finger. I'm Fact. like, oh, God, don't tell me about this guy. No right? fact. Yeah, and I remember uh, a lot of people used to talk about Kramer. But I met Ron and he yeah, he wore fur coats and he did. And he looked like Scott Steiner to me. That's what he looked like. Yeah, to me. Who's Scott he was a nice guy. I never had anything bad to say. Listen. About. He wasn't mean to me. He's a nice guy. Listen, he's a guy, loves uh, bodybuilding. Right. 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 He owns everything you see orange. No, hold on. In Venice. So, so tell these kids. But I didn't know. Why did I even bring up his name? Because they don't, don't know, know who the hell I'm talking about. So Ron Kramer invented, he's a formulator or a chemist. Which one? Ron? Right. He's a businessman. But he's come up with some great products. Oh. And what's the company? What, what was his company? Thermo... It was Thermolife. Thermolife. And Thermolife had some amazing Thermo Thermolife still exists. Yes. And what was the fat burner that he had that... I have no... couldn't keep on the shelves. My idea. Oh, my God. The fat See? burner that he had. It was the most amazing thing ever. I have... Borderline no uh, illegal up to clenbuterol level. It was just amazing. And he... And from what I understand, I'm sure you're going to let me know now, he's trademarked and patented a lot of things under his name. Okay. Well, that's how... How I knew him. Okay, there you go. Right? So I knew him. I didn't have a personal relationship with him right. during all those years. It was just Ron Kramer this. More Ron Kramer that. That's how I heard it. And yeah. there was some other dude who kept trashing us, me, online constantly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, oh, about her looks and this and that. And I was like, listen, my friend, I am not a model I'm not a spokesmodel. I don't pretend to be. I'm on the business side. Right. And that's it. Like, you judging me in any other capacity. Were you guys just, engaged at one point? He's, but you're just skipping over everything. Right? Yeah, I'm going to get to the good stuff. Let's We're, just put it this way. He was suing us over and 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 over. 
Okay, so he over. We got it. No, over. So and he over. sued. There well, was a lot of lawsuits involved. Well, because he had a patent, um, like with. Uh, I don't want to miss speak um, with like nitrates or something. Right, lots <laughs> of patents. <laughs> He, he's one of the leaders okay, so in patents. Your, so he was your enemy. How did you guys he become was, friends? He was um, big enemy. How did you become friends? You ever watch Sleeping with the Enemies? Right. The movie. <laughs> but keep your, keep your friends close with your enemies closer. Well, oh, at one point, like, like that? you know, I remember being in <laughs> Venice. Something like that. Like, I remember being in Venice. And it was like the tail end of my marriage um, that I did everything I could to keep, like, together right and um rich was getting the lifetime achievement award and he got a plaque in venice right california so um i was working with a publicist out there and we set up this really nice i don't even know what you want to call it out there where um um who was it uh sugar shane mosley came out okay and uh ryan Philippe came out and it was just to honor him for getting the, so the plaque so or whatever. The, so I saw Ron on the back end. You know what I mean? Right. And thank God for, you know, most of my amnesia. Because I just, like, went right up to Ron. I was like, hey, Ron. I'm, I'm Liz Gaspari. Okay. <laughs> How are you? You know, as if, like. I had amnesia about all the, <laughs> all the lawsuits law over, and, and the lawsuit. The over and over again. If you go online, literally, I don't know, minutes after I was like, hi, Ron, how are you? I just want to meet you. You know, because I'm not the type to hold grudges and all that. Probably because I don't remember. Um, but you're bringing it up for me. Right. Um, minutes later, I just look behind me and I hear like, you've been served. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> so they got to serve you again. Woo, like Ron though. Oh, Ron, he served you. Thermal life, but he made sure, you know, he did it where it was very public. I see what you mean. You know, you, you, you he had. He put on the show. Woo. He had a person camera, mm -hmm. like recording us. Right. And all you see is like, Rich, like running away from him, right? And he was like, "I don't know you. I don't know what you're talking about." And then I kept telling Rich, but it's all on video. Uh, keep going, keep going. You know, uh, surround him. I was still protecting Rich. I was like telling the people with us who were actually um, attorneys, publicists in LA, and I was like, "Surround him." Right. Um, but Ron still through the two inch stack of lawsuit <laughs> right at Rich's feet and he's like you're served <laughs> so it was a scene it was a scene to say the least and Ron came and then really quick answer me how did you guys become friends that's a really good question how did we become friends something happened like I can't remember <laughs> okay so we're gonna keep that okay I get where she's going with this because I know her no! personality no no, 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 we're gonna skip that because then that's it gets, oh, it gets no. super personal. No, 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 no. I was helping him. No, really, I was helping him okay. with um, uh, a new brand that he was launching, Muscle Beach, and I said, you know, you should come. Uh, so with my manufacturer. So this was you were already broken up with with Rich at this point, well, and, and it was you were moving on to on your own thing. Well, oh no, you just reminded me. What? How did like I was like thinking like how did I link up with him? Oh, because he served me again. <laughs> yeah, he served me again, and I had to go to New York or somewhere and do a deposition. Right. Yeah, I had to do a deposition that was hours long, and then he said, "Do you do you want to go to lunch?" Because he felt like I guess bad from every answer I was saying to him, like in the deposition, because he was present at the time. Right. So we went to lunch and then, you know, he seemed like not the guy that I knew behind this relentless So two life. powerful, business-minded, stubborn. Stubborn. Yeah, cocky, two monsters uh, got monsters. together and, and okay, all right, let's stop right, it right, there. Right, right, right. We're gonna stop it there, okay? <laughs>